Hello, my name is Luke Jennings. I'm VP of R&D at Push Security, and I'm here to talk to you about info stealers today. So how attackers are stealing your cookies to bypass MFA. Okay, what I want to do now is show the behavior of an info stealer effectively after it's been downloaded and executed. So I'm not, I'm not going to show you sort of, you know, the malware delivery mechanism and, and, and running a malicious piece of code as such. Um, I'm going to say, you know, this machine I'm going to demo on it's been compromised and then I'm going to show you the individual components uh, of how an infosida works and we'll, we'll show sort of some, some session hijacking attacks being uh, conducted using stolen cookies. So I'm going to focus more on the actual mechanisms to show how it works rather than utilizing a criminal piece of, of, of an info stealer. So I'm actually going to use an open source info stealer. So it's a standalone executable called Hack Browser Data. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use that to simulate info stealer behavior, combine that with a Python script just to change the format of the data, and then I'll be using a browser extension called Cookie Editor as the importer, rather than me showing you a criminal piece of info stealer that's just going to run invisibly in the background, send some data off to an external location, uh, and then I won't be able to show you the other mechanisms. And we're going to start off by stealing an entry session as our first example. So on the left is my victim machine. So what we're going to be assuming is the compromised machine. I'm just going to log into Entra with MFA, first of all, to show you that happening. So I'm just going to use the Microsoft Authenticator app now uh, and log into that. Okay, so now I'm, I'm logged in. Uh, so you can see I'm logged into Office. Okay, there we go. I'm in Chrome. This is my victim machine. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna close Chrome and we'll assume it's compromised. I'm gonna be doing everything manually from the command shell here just to show you the mechanisms by which this occurs. So I'm gonna run hack browser data. I'm just gonna show you the basic data it pulls back, like the kind of things are available first. So, okay, look, we can get passwords out if we want. In this case, I've only saved one password, but um, you can see how I've saved the password for my Entra account, so I could steal that. But as we've seen, we're using uh, MFA, and as such, you know, I wouldn't be able to use that as an attacker on my own. But there are a whole bunch of cookies as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to output in a different format. I used CSV before just because it's easy to show. I'm going to output in JSON format instead, and I'm going to use a, a Python script just to transform that data uh, into a slightly different format that is correct to use with the, the browser extension I'm going to show you in a sec. I just want to show you here quickly, I'm connected, I'm just using a VPN to sort of show location-based things. In this case, I'm, I'm connected from the USA. We'll come to you know, this later when we look at location controls. But right now, I'm just going to copy all those cookies and I'm going to go to my attacker machine. I've got a Firefox instance here with cookie editor running. And I'm going to import all those cookies that we've just stolen from the other machine. And then what happens is I'm going to try and access Office now. And you can see there, it's transparently re-logged in and resumed the session, and I'm now uh, compromised the Office session. So it really is as simple as that. If I move on to the second demo, we're gonna kind of see that again, but we're gonna consider how things like conditional access policies or other you know, restrictions on logins might impact things if you're dealing with something non-Microsoft. I'm gonna use conditional access policies from Microsoft here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume here that it's been set up so that logins can only occur from, a, from certain countries where the user is intended to work from. And that if an attacker located in a completely different part of the world steals this and tries to access it, they shouldn't be able to log in from those locations. And just to show again, you know, I'm connected from the US on my victim machine, that's a legitimate connection. Whereas my attacker machine is coming from a completely different part of the world. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did again. I'm gonna import these cookies and we're gonna see what happens. Now, in Microsoft's case, the way their sessions often work is that if they detect any change, there's a, a re-authentication event, but the cookies are persistent to re-allow authentication unless there's some additional control. So here it's essentially try to transparently re-authenticate, like the user wouldn't normally see anything, but we've actually come back with an error here saying you can't access this right now. It doesn't say specifically to the attacker here, but it obviously gives you an indication that it's some sort of restriction, probably it says browser app or location based. In this case, I'm, I'm telling you now, this is because of the location. So we said before, uh, you know, often info stealers will take information from the endpoint itself 
about you know not just the passwords and the cookies but like system names and location data and other things so if i was an attacker i'd say okay where did these credentials come from and I'd, I'd say, okay, look, it came from a machine that was in Miami, US. Maybe I can use residential VPNs to do the same thing and see if that works now. So off screen, I'm just using the same VPN you saw previously to connect myself to the same vague location of, of, of Miami, US. And then all I need to do is just refresh. Didn't even need to do anything else. Didn't need to re-import anything. And then there you go. So it can be as simple as that. And that's if location policies even get applied on session stealing. For some apps, it won't even check this again. Microsoft is a little bit of a different case where it reperformed those checks. But if things are quite coarse based on location data like that, often that information will be available to an attacker anyway. And with res residential VPNs existing all around the world now, they can generally shift their IP to fit in with this. So unless you've got very tight controls that say it has to come from an IP range for your particular office, that's obviously a stronger, a much stronger control. But if it's general location based controls, then often someone with an info stealer may be able to just circumvent that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to another demo. And now we're going to consider the idea of downstream setup application session theft. So I focused on the IDP level, looking at Microsoft Entra to begin with. That's obviously the juiciest target for anyone because that's your IDP. It normally controls access to some of the most important data you have, like email and often files. And then often that's then the gateway to any other system you access or, or rather a large portion of them via SSO and things like that. So it's obviously, you know, IDPs are obviously the juiciest target, but you have to consider that it's not the only target. Often. Uh, a lot of data will be on downstream apps. Even if access to them is controlled via the IDP, they have their own session management approaches normally. And so you can independently steal session cookies from them. So we're going to look at this again. Um, and I'm going to say we've got conditional access policies restricting the location. And we'll say that, I don't know, we can't circumvent that for whatever reason. Maybe those IPs are really, really specific. So it's like quite a strong control. Whatever the case is, we're just going to assume we can't steal the entry session. But let's say we're interested in, in this case, I don't know, Atlassian. I'm just using that as an example of a downstream app that someone might use. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show accessing it via SSO. I'm going to do a Microsoft login here. So this is going to be a social login form of SSO. So this is an OIDC login. It's different to a SAML login, but it's still just another form of SSO. So I'm logging in with my Microsoft account not with an Atlassian account. And now I'm logged in, which means there's an active session in my browser. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to show, uh, you know, the fact that I wouldn't be able to hijack the entry session. We're going to see how that differs if we want to access uh, Atlassian. So let's say I go back to Microsoft, I re-import these cookies again, and then I, I, I try to access it. And uh, what I find is that I've got this same message again. Okay, all right, can't get into that. Next best thing is let's try and access some downstream SAS apps. So I go to Atlassian and say, well, actually the data I'm interested in is all in these tickets and these stories and, and whatever wikis you know, in Atlassian. Uh, let's import the Atlassian cookies uh, and then see if that works. And there we go. You can see now I've hijacked the session for Atlassian. So it's exactly the same approach. Um, nothing really changes, uh, but it's just to sort of make the point that you, you know, it's not just about protecting your IDP. Obviously, that's the number one front, you know, number one control. Like it's the front door, it's the gateway. You want to give that the most attention, but you do need to consider the fact that uh, downstream SaaS applications can have their sessions stolen too, and they will generally not have the same level of security controls as you might see on an IDP. Okay, I've been picking on. Uh, Microsoft, <laughs> I just want to use a different example. So I'm going to just show another example, very similar thing, but with Okta. So I'm going to say, okay, let's say we can't compromise the Okta session for whatever reason. Can we do the same thing and access downstream SAS applications from Okta? I'm going to just use shortcut as a similar example here, because it's a similar, a similar product to some of Atlassian's products. Uh, and I'm going to steal the sessions from a shortcut SAS application that I've accessed using Okta, as we just saw. And then I'll perform the same attack we saw previously. And again, I've hijacked the session 
for Shortcut. So it's not just Microsoft, you know, uh, it's not just Atlassian. I just wanted to show you, you know, this affects everything pretty equally. You know, it affects Microsoft, it affects Okta, and it affects downstream SaaS applications through multiple different SSO login mechanisms. Um, it's a pretty general technique. Okay, so I've done most of the offensive side now. Uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to show a little bit of what we've been doing at Push as a final thing for protecting against session token theft. Uh, it's a pretty generic method, so I'm going to show you how it works, and then I'm going to show you the sort of easy integrations we've made uh, for Microsoft and Opta. I'll use Microsoft as an example here, uh, being the sort of most high-value examples of it. So uh, this is our app, and this is our controls page. We've got lots of different controls in place, so I'm going to look at the session theft detection one here. And what happens is... You have the ability to generate a new marker, and then what happens is that marker will be added to the user agent for requests made to any of the domains that you choose to add down there. And separate to that, if you want to make this control work very easily for Microsoft or for Okta, you can set up an integration with those, and then we'll do the whole job of doing the detection for you. But I'm gonna show you under the hood how the detection works first, and then I'll show you the sort of easy version. So you can configure the domains that will cause this marker to be sent in the user agent. And the idea is that if the session is stolen in some way, a request is made from elsewhere, that marker won't be included by default because it won't exist. The push extension won't be there. And thus you can detect theft by seeing sessions be resumed elsewhere in backend logs without the marker present that we'd expect. So we've added a whole bunch of different uh, Microsoft domains here to make sure that it's sent for all those. And we've made the Microsoft integration. So I'm going to show you the detailed side where if you wanted to implement this yourself, we will be sending that marker in the user agent from our browser extension for every user. Now, if you go and then look in the logs in Azure, uh, the Azure logs, you can see this marker has been added. This was the legitimate login that occurred from Chrome on the, on the Victor machine. You can see how that marker was present. On the other hand, if I look at the next login event that occurred when I stole the session, you can see how, well, also, I've not done anything clever to try and impersonate a different browser. I was doing it from a whole different browser there, Firefox. So you can see straight away it's a bit weird because it came from Firefox. But principally, there's no marker present. And so this is the idea. If you can see that a session was accessed again, but without a marker, when previously it was seen with a marker, you can infer with a very high fidelity that that session has been stolen from elsewhere. Now, you can't see in those common Azure logs that that was definitely the same sessions. It's hard to tell that apart. It could just be someone just logging in legitimately, but from a different device. But actually, with Microsoft uh, and with Okta and some other backends, you can often see more detail in via the API. Now, I'm just going into Microsoft Compliance Manager to show you effectively the same login logs here that show you more data. You might not be familiar with this interface if you've only used Azure Logs. But look at this session ID here. This is for the first login. Now, you're not going to remember all of it. Just remember the first bit being 527. Uh, that is a legit login, and if we go up and we see the user agent again, you'll see this was the legit one that had the marker at the end. Whereas on the other hand, if we go to the malicious one, you'll see, okay, so this was the Firefox login, and then if we go down, and it's not got the marker, and if we go down here, we look at the session ID, you can see the session ID was the same. So this is how we infer with high fidelity that this session was stolen. So we say this is not a new login, this is the resumption of an existing session on a different device without the push extension installed, someone must have stolen the exact session cookie to do that. And so it's a much, much, much better indicator than just finding uh, a login from a different user agent or even just a login without the marker. And so you can send that to any domain you want. If you've got a, a custom application that is important to you, you could send it to the domains where that's hosted. And if you've got backend server logs like this, you could then implement your own detection. Uh, so that's why we've built a generic feature for that, so it can be used for anything. But for your common IDPs like Microsoft, like Okta, we've got the auto integrations. So if you do an integration in our app, you'll get an event like this. So here you can say, hey, session theft was detected of this account. And it's as simple as that. It appears in our events page. And if you've configured web it will be sent to your SIM. And then you can do whatever you want with it.
So that's what we're doing to help protect against this uh, issue with our product. Hopefully that's been useful and thank you for listening.